everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on page eight, and this is Orchids and Cats, Stamperia's Orchids and Cats, and this is gonna be like page one. So we're gonna have two flaps, a left and a right, and then a flap that comes down the center. So let's start with the left and right. So this is five by eight, five by eight. You're gonna need two of those, and you're gonna score a half inch on the five inch side. Now we're gonna inset these um, a half inch. So we're gonna come in just a half inch from the edge. There we go. Now I always measure one side and I'm gonna, I've got a little piece that I'm gonna to have to trim off. I measure one side and then I don't measure the second side, I just bump the flap up against the one that's already installed. Otherwise you might wind up with a gap and I really don't want one. It's not that big of a deal. So I'm gonna hold this down. I'm gonna push this into the installed flap and then I'm just gonna pull my fingers out and let it fall. Okay, so there we go. So we've got a left and a right and now we're gonna install this top down flap. Oops, and I need to find my center line, so let's do that. So we're gonna mark it at five, which is the center of the eight, or the 10 inch wide pocket page. There's my five inch. Okay, and then the center of this, which uh, I forgot if I told you, four and five eighths by eight. Four and five eighths by eight. That's an odd size, but it's this size because of the cut aparts in the collection. Um, the cut apart is four and a half inches, and I wanted to have a small border around it. So it's four and five eighths by eight. You're gonna score a half inch on the eight inch side, and the center of this is gonna be two and three eighths. If I can hold still two. Oops, I'm marking the wrong side. <laughs> you got it. You need to mark the side with the uh, score line on it, two and three eighths. So now I've got a little tick mark here and one here. I'm gonna remove my backing and then I'm gonna um, install this. But before I do, I'm gonna close my panels and then I'm gonna catch this underneath them. Because the important thing is I want this to be installed high enough that these will close freely. Okay, now another way you can ensure that that happens is to put a second score line here. So have your first score line at half inch, your second score, score line at five eighths of an inch, and then you have this little gusset. Um, I typically don't like that, just because I think when you stand it up and you're looking at the top, it's just a lot of bulk this way. But it does, it works either way, um, and it's really kind of a preference. So there we go, that's page eight. So when we get back together shortly, um, we'll start decorating. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we are working on orchids and cats and this is page eight. And I have the A sides ready, but not the B. So we're gonna go ahead and work on the A sides and I'll take a break and then we'll come back and finish the B sides. So I'm gonna share with you um, all the paper on the A sides of page eight are from the 12 by 12 collection pack, okay? Just so you know, I know sometimes it's difficult and it's especially difficult in my mind um, to tell which size the uh, designer paper came from with Stamperia. So, hmm, here we go. All right, okay. That doesn't want to come apart, sorry. I need to clean my tip again, I guess. Or at least the cap. I think maybe there's something in the cap that's uh, sticking to it. Okay, here we go. So as you recall, when we built the page, um, there is a half inch inset for these flaps. So we're gonna put a half inch decorative strip on either side, then we're gonna uh, cover the inside. But first we'll focus on this. And now that I say that, if I recall correctly from page one, I forgot to place the magnet before I put my papers down. So let's go ahead and take care of that right now. So 
I think that's a good spot. I don't want to put it in the middle because I don't want to want it to be difficult for the paper to come over the magnet. So I'm going to put it to one side. And in this case, it's the right side. Actually, it's the right side with the page laying flat, but if it were installed in the, that's eh, still the same, still right. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that, I was just having a little brain fade there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get this in. And then once this is on, we're going to locate the second magnet here. And there's not gonna be any color blocking on this panel or on this panel, so I'm not worried about it. There is gonna be some color blocking on the top layer. So I would only be worried about placement of the magnet uh, in my designer paper if there's color blocking going on, but there's not. I mean, there will be here, but the magnet's on the flip side. Okay. I'm just gonna burnish the uh, adhesive all the way down around the magnet. Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and start by laying in these two pieces, which is again from the 12 by 12. And I didn't just cut from one corner. I actually um, used my ruler and figured out how to center the bird. So it would be, you know, this beautiful display and the bird wouldn't be cut in two. So you wind up having to cut some off the top and, and off the side to get the bird so it's centered. So you're looking for a nine by eight inch piece and then you're gonna trim it down just a little bit more for your border. So when you're looking to plan on a full sheet of paper, you're kind of visually looking for that nine by four. And then, um, then you're gonna trim around that. Hopefully that's clear. And I've already put my ink on, so this will go pretty quickly. And I think I mentioned in a previous video, but next up is going to be uh, Midnight Tales, which lots of people are looking forward to. And it will, I'm gonna lift that back up. I need a contrast to see my edges. Um, I'll get it done in enough time for you guys to use it for Halloween, if you want. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to turn it sideways. I'm having a hard time centering it. There, much better. I always prefer to lay my paper down where I can see three of the four sides. And then it goes in much better. <laughs> so we're gonna do the same thing here. Use that slight contrast, turn it around so I can see three of the four sides. First, I'm gonna verify that I have my pattern continuously flowing, and it is. I would not want to put this in upside down. Okay, I'm just gonna stick this under here so I can see the edge. verify one more time that I was putting it in right side up. It's not obvious with this pattern. There we go. Okay, that's in. Let's go ahead and burnish it. And then the next thing we're going to do is add our two strips. Now, I inset this a half inch and then I just used uh, this flap and pushed it right into the other so they'd meet in the middle. So one side's a little bit bigger than the other, which is this one. So each one of these strips is actually trimmed to fit. So uh, measure it out, trim it, and then don't mix them up left and right because one side's going to be a little bit smaller than the other. It's a little low, so I'm going to lift it and dry that one more time. There we 
things out. Much better. Okay, now we're going to do this side. Okay, and then I am ready to do the B side. We're going to do this on the B side. I'm actually going to do the same thing I did on page one where I'm going to use a cut apart and then add two bands on the top and bottom. So this will be the flip side and we'll install it just like this. And actually, if you go back and look at page one, this is part of that same pattern and it's also from the 12 by 12. I'm going to turn the whole thing around so again I can see these three edges. So pay attention to your butterfly and make sure it's right side up. So now we have the A side of the left and right flap, the B side of the top down flap. So we still have to plan the uh, B side uh, and the inside, and then also get the A side of this top down flap. So I'll need a minute to organize my paper, ink my edges, and then we'll be back in just a few minutes to finish up this page, okay? So don't forget your magnet like I did on page one. <laughs> you can still figure out a way to work around it, but um, this is what I had intended for page one, which is not very much, very helpful when you get to page eight. But some of you guys watch the whole thing and learn lessons with me through the whole project. So anyways, thanks everybody for tuning in. I'll be back shortly with the rest of page eight. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and I have selected the cut apart that we're going to use on the A side of the flap here and that I've trimmed out a couple of pieces um, and these are actually pieces left over from the 12 by 12 that I trimmed out uh, which has the bird on it. So we're going to start by first of all lining up our pattern because it's supposed to be a continuous pattern. There we go, and that is it. So I used one piece of paper and split it in half. And I'm gonna put the lighter one on the bottom since there's so much color down here and I'll put the darker one on the top. So we're gonna start by installing the top piece. Then we'll add um, the cat and then we'll trim the last piece down to fit. And I'm adding ink on the edges and it is a powder puff mahogany, which is my favorite. And we have these in stock. So if you guys are interested, head on over to our shop at Scrap and Create and you can find our powder puff collection. We have other colors. This is my favorite. It seems to go with everything. Okay, now we're gonna add this. And then, like I said, we'll take that last bit and trim it to fit. And that's really important when you're doing color blocking, just in case you don't get a piece in completely square. Um, that's your opportunity to line things up. Turn that over and get a better clip. I need it closer to me. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I can already tell visually, I trimmed this out to be one inch and I can already tell that this needs to be trimmed more. So let's 
match our pattern again and make sure that as we're trimming, we're trimming off this side, not this side, so that when you look down, you'll see the pattern continue, which means we're gonna trim off this side, okay? So I'm gonna lay it down. I'm gonna get my gap like I expect it to be, and then I'm gonna put a pencil mark on either side, and we're gonna use um, a ruler and a cutting knife or a craft knife to trim this out. So here's my ruler. It's best if you have one that is cork backed, which will keep your paper from slipping around. Oops. And it's not that easy when the paper is so small but we can do it, we can do it. Okay. I'm gonna trim it and then we're gonna test it. Yep, that's gonna do it. Looks good. We're gonna add some additional ink on the side that we just trimmed. going back to that to make sure I lay it down right. Okay, there we go. Pretty pretty. Looks nice, okay. So now we have the A sides. And this B side, so we still have to come back and cover the inside, but that's it for now. I'm gonna take a quick break, organize my papers, ink the edges so you guys don't have to watch that, and then we'll finish the rest of page eight. Be back soon. All right, I've selected the rest of the patterns and we're ready to go ahead and set, uh, lay everything in. I've got ink on everything. We're gonna start with the centerpiece Lay this in and then uh, we'll dry fit these two panels and then go ahead and lay them in. That'll be the end of page eight. So one of the things I like about the large format books and one of the reasons I didn't make it too complicated on page one and page two is because it's eight by 10, um, you can easily put a five by seven photo in here without cropping, you get a beautiful mat around it. Um, you can also do an eight by 10, but you have to do a little bit of cropping to make it fit, right? At least of an, an eighth of an inch, but a five by seven will fit in here beautifully. Um, and you'll have um, a one inch border around a five uh, by seven. Is that right? That's not right. A six by eight, you'll have a one inch border around a six by eight. Or you can do multiple photos, a collage. So, and the other thing that's nice about this size is that each of these uh, flaps are four and a half inches wide, which means you can put a four by six inch photo and still have a nice mat around it. At least a quarter inch. Okay. Moving right along, hope everybody's doing well. And actually, I mentioned the airplanes today, but it's actually been pretty quiet, so that's a good thing. Okay, that 
is it for page eight. I'm gonna burnish this down real quick. Make sure there's no glue that needs to be picked up before I close it so it doesn't glue itself shut and it looks like everything's okay. So we've got the right, the left, and then the top down flap, which has the magnet behind it. So again, we've got the top, left, right, and that is page eight. Okay, thanks everybody for tuning in. This is Stephanie from Scrap and Create. I'll be back soon with more.